Well, after that complete sell-off that we saw the Indian markets yesterday, just after the budget was announced, today was a day of some stability and, in fact, a slight bounce back. The Sensex eventually closing about 127 points or so up. Well, we're now being joined to give his perspective on all that's happened by one of the most influential voices in the global markets, Mark Faber. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you on, uh, live on the show right now, Mark Faber. Uh, just wanted to get your sense of, A, the budget, and B, the massive sell-off that we saw in the Indian markets yesterday. Do you think the markets overreacted? Yes, I think so. I mean, I, I don't think that the budget was particularly encouraging. In particular, I don't think they are enough privatization. But on the other hand, I don't think it's huge disappointment. Now, what has happened in India is we had a very powerful rally from the intraday low in uh, November 2008 from less than 8,000 to recently over uh, 15,000. And so some profit taking was in order anyway. And I think what we may see now is possibly a retracement of the gaps we had between 12,000 and 14,000 when the elections took place. So I wouldn't be surprised to see the index go back to, I don't know, a range of, say, 10 to 12,000 before the bull market resumes. But I don't think we'll make new lows in the index. Well, not making new lows in the index, uh, Mr. Faber, that, that, of course, would mean going down to something like 8,000. That's what the level was in March. But you do think that the correction could continue and that the markets could go down to the 12,000 levels? you think that's something which is... Uh, possibility, perhaps even a probability? Well, what has happened since uh, the end of last year, and especially in America since March, is that we had a very powerful rally. The S&P was from the low on March 6th to the recent peak up by 44%. And India, as you know, has gone up by almost 100%, and many stocks are up more than 100% during this rally. So I think that the correction is uh, only natural and actually desirable from a longer term perspective. So Mr. Faber, if you were a long term investor, which I know you are, would you be then tending to say, if there is the slide which you're talking about and you're saying the market could go down to 12,000, uh, would you be a buyer at those levels? Yeah, we'll have to see in the context of the world in general, I think uh, we had a boom 2001 to 2007 in the global economy. And from here onwards, we'll have slower growth. But as I said, even if India doesn't grow at 9%, it's not the end of the world if it only grows every year by 5 6%. At the best of the economic growth in, uh, in the U.S. in the 19th century, the country was only growing in real terms at about 4% per annum, and it became a very prosperous country in the process. So I would say to grow at around 5 6 cents is actually very good. It's not exceptional because Japan was growing between 1950 and 1980 by approximately 8% in real terms every year. But Japan was a smaller economy in a larger pond, and India and China are larger economies in essentially the same pond, so it's more difficult to outgrow the rest of the world. Right. Well, Mr. Faber, it's, uh, it's been a pleasure to have you with us. Uh, if I understood you correctly, you were pretty much saying that there is a possibility that the index could slide down to 12,000, but the long-term view, according to you, is, is, is uh, very strong. Thank you so much for joining us.